the Art Center of Coastal Carolina, my name is Nicole Nelson and I'm the resident scenic charge artist. That means I paint all the theater sets. I'm going to be giving you a video tutorial today on how to make new furniture look old. So before we get started, we're gonna need to gather a few materials. First, gather every color you think you need. I recommend three. Two for your grain step, which is essentially when you're putting in a faux wood grain, and one for your wash step, which is gonna be the age, the dirt, the patina that comes with that age. So pick your colors based on what you think is gonna look good with that. I highly recommend Pinterest if you need help. The other materials you'll need are scissors, a rag, two chip brushes, and a sea sponge. We'll start by cutting a grain pattern into your chip brush with your scissors and your chip brush. And this is gonna help you control your paint and make sure that you get just enough to form the grain. Once you've got that done, you're gonna start by mixing down your different palette colors. So take your two grains, and generally you wanna mix them with water. If you're using oil paint, it's whatever makes it thinner. So if, it's, if it requests you to clean with xylene, xylene. If mineral spirits, mineral spirits. You always wanna mix down with whatever you would eventually clean up with. And the ratio for this kind of a mix is 75% paint, 25% water. So whatever you end up dumping in there, if it's a cup, of paint, you're gonna want a quarter cup of water. For your wash, the ratios are entirely different. That's why it's called a wash versus a grain. This ratio, on the other hand, is one paint to two to three times the amount of whatever you're mixing down with. In our case, it's water. So if I put in a cup of paint, I want two cups to three cups of water to mix down. They both tend to settle, so you're gonna need to make sure that you have a stir stick handy so that you can mix between steps and make sure that everything is doing its paint thing chemically. All right, so to start, you're gonna take your newly cut up chip brush and you're gonna dip it in your first color grain. Make sure you've removed all your drawers and everything, all your little weird nooks and crannies for whatever it is that you are painting, just like I've done here. Um, and before you paint, meditate on the adage, I always have to, of an airplane taking off. You wanna be that gentle when applying. The paint can get out of hand really fast on your chip brush. I find it best to always be gentle when applying. And then you take your paint brush, very lightly over top. This replicates a natural wood grain. Just make sure that when you're applying, whatever grain your natural wood is going, you keep that grain. So as you can see here, this one's going horizontal. So I'm going to continue that grain going horizontal when I fold it in. Once you've got one grain on, you're gonna want to do the same process with your next color. Generally, you start with the base grain and move to the accent grain. So on the next grain, you wanna go even lighter than what you did on this grain because you just want it peeking through a little bit. All right, so now it comes time to apply the next grain. Make sure you've watched the paint dry before you apply. I know it's really boring, but that's most of my job. It's watching the paint dry. Also do your best to keep it fairly straight and try to keep it as even as possible so that no section gets too out of hand. It'll make the end product look that much better. All right. Now that everything's dry, we're moving on to the wash step. And this is the step that really makes everything come together and look pretty and old. First, start out by on your piece, picking out where logically dirt grime would gather. For most pieces, or like this piece here, the corners are good spots. Anywhere where there's this kind of distinct breakup between lines, dimensionality differences between everything. Dirt always naturally collects in those grooves and that's what you're trying to replicate right here, is that dirt and that age and that 
patina that comes. Make sure that you stir your paint before the step because this one really likes to settle given that more of it is water than it is actual paint. You're painting with colored water essentially at this point. So once you've decided on where you're going to put the paint, that's when you take your sea sponge and you lightly dip it in. Then you just lightly dab wherever that grime would naturally collect. Sometimes, depending on what kind it is, you just want to add a little bit of that in, dab over top so that the texture remains the same. Now that you've got your faux dirt on there, take your rag. And this is when you just go dab, dab, dab. Keep in mind that if it's dripping at all, you want to catch that with your rag and just dab it out. Think when you're cleaning or when you're trying to get that one stain out of a really difficult piece of clothing, inevitably your white jeans that got ketchup on them at 4th of July. Think pat to dry. What you're going for here. And you want to take enough of it off that it looks slightly transparent, but not so much off that you didn't do anything. So this is about what you're going for. Once you finish this and it's dry, if you want it all to come back together again and not have a distinct difference between what you're using in terms of paint and what your finish is on the wood, pick up a can or a quart of semi-gloss or satin seal. A seal is a clear coat that just goes over the top and finishes everything. Generally, it deepens your colors a little bit, brings them to life. It's also when you go to Home Depot or Lowe's and they have that plaque on the paint counter that says flat, satin, semi-gloss, gloss, and it's all the same color, but just progressively darker. Look at it up close, there's a gleam. And that's what a finish is, that's what it's doing. And if that's what you want at the end is to make it look more like a finished piece because almost everything anymore in American furniture has at least a satin sheen on it. Then you should go buy that quart of clear coat, satin seal, and apply it. It'll bring everything together at the end and make everything look like a cohesive piece. And that is how to make new furniture look old. I'm Nicole Nelson here at the Art Center of Coastal Carolina. Thank you for joining us for this video tutorial. Remember to like, subscribe, and smash that bell.